おはようございます。Good morning. I don't need this. Could I get this way? Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank m a u r i Foundation and、uh, especially Mrs. m a u r i who is attending this morning, m a u r i Yoshiko san. Sama, who is a great friend of France and art, and whose husband was actually,、uh, before many people, involved in preserving, collecting, and helping and motivating artists, and also, of course,、uh, Nanjo Fu Mio San, who has been wonderful in organizing and inviting us this morning. Yesterday, I had the chance. To attend a few sessions and listen carefully to the speakers. And to be honest, what I heard helped me to change what I was planning to say this morning. This is why such forums, I think, help a lot people in charge. You could be an elected person, you could be in charge, like my colleague in London, Justin. Or Candy in Bangkok, in Thailand, or in London, you know, in charge of our policies. You know, we need to listen, we need to meet, we need to exchange. And for these reasons, I believe I'm in Japan at a time where I call it Japanese Renaissance, at a time where Japanese people ask the right questions because of the situation, you know. Economically, politically, and I would say ecologically. After Fukushima, I think the world has changed. And I think that it's not only Japan that has changed, I think we have changed and we must change. The key word I had chosen has been changing in the morning, at breakfast, and at night. But I remain stuck, I would say, to a word I love, which is in Japanese, daitan sa, to dare. I don't believe the world can go forward and that policies can be good for public and for citizens if we don't dare and take risk. What are politicians? Who are they? Who are we? You know, when you're elected, You represent the people and the citizens. And what do you expect actually from us? You expect that we are honest, that we work hard, but you expect that we think, sometimes twice, that we are competent, that we have a vision, and that we have action. I will give you a few examples of things I did and we did in Paris in a city which has a long, long history of landmark and a very heavy heritage, which is almost a burden. You know, when we invite artists to come to Paris, often I realize that the beauty of the city is not something that makes it easy for them. On the opposite, it makes you shy. And so much beauty is not always very helpful. So, a city like Paris and cities like, of course, London, Berlin, all these big cities we all know and we all visit, you know, because of the landmark museum, s theaters, avenues, gardens, and, and, and food and restaurants, need to be. Revisited and need to be shuffled. In the north of Paris, you have an example here of a place which used to be the warehouse of coffins, caskets. That's where we had not the dead bodies, but that's where we had the basket, the coffins, by thousands. And the logic was at the time, in the 90s, that such a building. Which is a 19th century building, should be erased in favor of, of course, building you know, offices or housing. 
apartment buildings. The decision we took at the time when we were in the opposition was to obtain for our Ministry of Culture that this building be kept. And once we were elected in 2001 and I became Vice Mayor for Culture, we organized to have this place as a great cultural center. So you could say, why another one in Paris? Paris has already many, many places for culture. But we did it because it was in a place in Paris where you have a very mixed population originating from Africa, from India, from South America, from many, many countries, and the population has a very high unemployment rate of 25%. When you wake up in the morning and you open your shutters, and if you look at what you see and it's ugly, I don't think you start your day the right way. When you open your windows in the morning and the first thing you see is a tree, a garden, or a beautiful building, you start your day right. Our friend from uh, Bangkok, from the Ministry of Culture yesterday, made a beautiful presentation when he showed after the tsunami how art and how artists participated and changed life. It's not like a cherry on a cake. It's deeply a way to live and put beauty everywhere, change people's life. So this 104 place, 104 is the number of the street, 104, Zero Maru Yon. But we pronounce the name by letters to make sure that people won't call it by digits, numbers, but we'll give it by a real name. The place has three theaters, a huge agora, a huge forum, where the young kids of the district come to do hip hop, dance, singing, meeting. And there is no violence. Whenever you put places for art, places for, places for practices, population, mostly those weak, without a job, get organized and know how to express themselves in a creative manner. Violence come whenever you don't have a response to daily life. And this place has absolutely proved, and we don't have even heavy security. We have no security. The first measure we took was to have people who would be mediator, who would help explain how to keep the place clean, how to keep the place beautiful, and how to feel free. So you go there, and on Saturday and Sundays, you have thousands and thousands of people and families who actually, you know, mix. It could be from Jewish origin, they could be from Muslim origin, they could be from whatever origin people mix because they have a place to meet and to be comfortable and to be respected in the heart of the city. There was also what Mr. Nanjo mentioned, so that's another view actually of inside of the building. So you have artists to come and perform. And believe me, we always think that art is actually more for people who have high education, people who have money. This is not true. Don't think that human beings don't have the heart, don't have taste, don't have sensibility. Everyone has. And education is maybe the level that we need to make this sensibility quicker. Nuit Blanche. You heard this morning from Mr. Nanjo that I created this event. I created this event when I was elected to, uh, next to our mayor, Mr. Delano, in 2001, because I had the belief that in a society where everything is so codified, organized, where we are in a world of rush, where we're supposed to connect more, and I believe if wires are connected, I'm not sure that human beings are more connected. Nuit Blanche is one night, and I really wanted to be just one night. We are so used to have things for long term, for a long period. I mean, there are no exhibitions that last more than one day. There are no museums where you can see just one painting. 
But I believe, which is what I do in my city hall, sometimes to have one sculpture and one painting. And I think it's a good way for people who want to discover art to know that small amount, small scale in a global world can work. So Nuit Blanche was a way to trap citizens. Most citizens who live in a city, in cities especially, you know, full of tourism and tourists and people who actually go through. And I'm not sure, you know, that people who visit cities today actually see, they look, but I'm not sure they see what they look at. So Nuit Blanche was a way to give the keys to artists and to tell them in a selection of, I would say, unusual spots. It could be a railway station, it could be an office building, it could be a clinic, it could be a temple, a synagogue, a mosque, a church, a school, a swimming pool. Artists would take the space and they would actually show exclusively their work that night. So people would go, and there is actually a, a kind of skeleton and a program very organized. So my advice to any city who, who likes to do Nuit Blanche today and about 50 cities in the world, 20 in France and 30 in the world do Nuit Blanche, like in Kyoto last weekend, that they have an artistic director. The danger for such events that they would become so popular that they would become a beer or sake festival, not an artistic festival. Artistic festival needs to have strict, strong artistic direction. Frustration is part of the process. We shouldn't be delivering art like we deliver food or goods or fashion items in shopping malls. You know, let's make sure that we don't become consumers and that we remain citizens. So Nuit Blanche was a way also to have people enter places, like I mentioned churches, I mentioned uh, mosques, you know, places where usually prayers, you know, people who have a religion go. And most of those buildings are actually part of our art. And actually we pay with our taxes the way to keep these buildings in good condition. So it's a national heritage. So why should we be kept away from discovering and sharing those beauties? But only artists, I believe, have the way to elevate our soul and to make sure that we'll be sharing together and questioning and thinking with art being demonstrated. I would like to say a word about my country and the city of Paris and Europe. I have the belief that we are going through a, a moral crisis. Europe needs to be, again, up. We have, I think, a political crisis in terms of, I would say, belief and confidence of citizens in their political uh, personnel. I believe that a young generation, a new generation of elected people need to run our countries. Too many elected people stay for too long. And too many times do we have the same people coming back. No, a country that wants to go forward needs to have a new generation of elected people. So I believe it's time for us to get up. And Japan is a good example of this energy I've been seeing everywhere in the population. Now, I would like to say a word. So that's example, sorry, I go back, of cities and of different, you know, uh, posters for every year. It started in 2002, so it has been already 12 years. And every year, it's a different director. Sometimes we keep the director for twice to make sure we'll have enough time to work on the long process. But it's also good that a new eye, a new sensibility will take the city and ride the city the way they see it for the night. 
Ah, that I will mention after. I would like to say a word about the necessity of the artist and culture in society. In what I called a rushing society, a non-stop society like ours today, let's be careful of the artist. The artist should be put forward like the architect, like the engineer, Let's have creation, creative process. Let's have those who dream and those who write the world for us first. The financial side, the marketing side of things should come after. Whenever you put marketing first, it doesn't always work. And creation, art, is not a good. It's a dream. It's about civilization. It's about being together. It's about being human beings. And it's about meaning. So many artists work, create slowly. We should be careful about this process. Every artist has a different pace, like engineers, like scientists, like someone who is a cook, a chef. Everyone has his own process. And we should respect the time needed by artists, by engineers, by inventors to come up with their own ideas. And I think this is also good in new technologies. Yesterday, the presentation by Young, I would say startup, uh, uh, managers with the presentation of Professor Ito was very interesting because I realized that new technology, that the, your principle of uh, BI before internet and after internet is a great chance because those young people, the way they presented what they were building and discovering was absolutely the same artistic, creative behavior than an artist. Some of them are quick, some of them are slow, but we should take into account this process always. And an artist, you know, having its own, his own rhythm, pace, can sometimes need an endless process and maybe never finish. This we are showing, it's how in the public space, the cities have been actually occupied by pieces of art. And for instance, we have built over the 10 past years in Paris, a tramway, which is like a circle around the city. You know, Paris is a small city in scale. It's 105 square kilometers. I don't know in miles, but uh, it's very small. When you compare to London or Berlin, Paris is 10 times smaller, with a population of 2.5 million people, which makes it very dense. That's why sometimes when you visit Paris, you're just disappointed the way people greet you. But that's because we live so tense together that we don't have always this relaxation we should have to welcome you. So I would like to present our apologies for that this morning. Art in the city, art in the public space can be great, but can be also a gimmick. If manifestations like Nuit Blanche, which is supposed to be delicate, which is supposed to be a way to make people wait and discover, not rush in a place just to catch everything, Let's make sure that whenever we occupy public space, we also know how to make the public space empty. There is a tendency today to use any space to show art. I have been fighting in my district and in Paris for years to make sure there would be some times in the year when there would be nothing. It's wonderful to walk on an empty space on an empty square, it's wonderful to walk and sit 
and just look at nothing because nothing can be very beautiful. Last night, we had this eclipse in Tokyo. I mean, the night before. It was quite extraordinary. So let's also enjoy those natural things that happen in a city. We don't have, we, we're very anguished, you know, society, where we want to feel everything everywhere. No, let's make sure that we have those empty spaces also. Because empty spaces also make more beautiful and extraordinary whatever we put in the public space. I would like to make a political, to compare in a political way, the art process. Whenever a parliament, a country, in a progressive country, decide to make a new law, and I'm going to take the example of the same-sex marriage law, I think it takes as long, as much time, for progressive laws than, than it took time for Michelangelo to paint the Chapel 16 ceiling. So the art process is as slow and long as progressive thinking. And I was happy to have the same-sex marriage law to be taken as an example in our countries. So my friends, more global we live, in what I call an exciting but rushing society, world where millions of new connections are made, are we sure that we get connected? The warriors are connected. Everybody has a cell phone. Everybody goes to the museum, make a picture. But are we sure that when those hands hand the cell phone, the iPad, the iPhone, over the painting, over the beautiful piece of art, that we actually look? I'm not sure. And let's watch also and be careful about our democracies where 50% of the population is becoming over 60. Are we sure that in our policies of public space and political cultural policies, we are taking care enough of this new generation, I would call it, of elderly? They need to have a place they need to be part of internet. They need to be part of the public space. And I think we should be extremely careful in this no borders world. For those reasons, more than ever, that we need, I believe, new multi-creative expressions. But at the same time, let's be careful about the way we renovate and we keep the beautiful messages of the past. This is an example. This building re-became a movie theater. Paris is one of the cities that has the most numbers of screens. We have more screens than days in the year because Paris counts 373 screens of movie theaters in the city. This place is the only example of neo-Egyptian architecture in Paris. So we decided to buy it from a, a private investor who owned the building because we wanted the building to be kept. But not only we wanted the building to be kept, we wanted the building to live. The danger of landmark is to keep the beauty but without life inside and behind. So it became again a movie theater. And believe me, it's in part of Paris, which is also very popular, where there were no theaters and no movies, and the population, the local population, has been very happy to be actually now with a new theater and a new movie theater they can use and actually go to. For those who believe, and I'm sure you hear this every day, whatever your responsibilities in life, you could be a manager, you could be a doctor, you could be a secretary, you could be anything in life. You will hear that culture costs a lot of money. But those who will tell you that culture costs a lot of money, artists cost a lot of money, tell them to try ignorance. The price of ignorance is much higher. And I believe this is something we should be 
keeping saying. Whenever you invest on, on culture, you make good and you make society. I think I will soon finish my presentation. This is details of the Luxor Theater I was presenting to you. This is a new garden, and I will say a word if I'm some minutes left, which is next to my city hall. Let's also be precise about local implication of city halls. For example, my city hall is a place where I have artists to be exhibited. I have an exhibition hall, which I made. I have been using the big uh, halls for orchestras to rehearsal. So believe me, whenever you know citizens come, either because they need to apply for identification or there is a, a court they have to attend a session or they need any paper or meeting anyone for schools, they come and they hear the cello or the piano rehearsing, and it makes good. Also, I think we should be extremely involved and careful about the way schools and kids and students are involved in the public affairs. So I have made up a council of kids that actually meet every month in my city hall and they run the affairs of the city hall for one day. And sometimes they have the possibility to make their planning for a week, what they want, what they wish to have, and how they wish, for instance, the district to be cleaned. They become responsible. Education is more than ever in the global world something absolutely necessary. And we local mayors have a responsibility to open our doors for education and for art. We have the spaces, we have the energy, and there's so many artists actually who are willing, who are wishing to be accepted, to be welcome to show their work. And those young generation, believe me, despite the fact they're excellent on the internet, they're also very good at looking at art and meeting and discussing with artists whenever they have the possibility. I would like, so that's a new garden we just opened. And this building you see in the back is actually, could be the office of Justin in Paris because that's where the director of cultural affairs is in Paris, just behind my city hall. This is also an example of a space which was empty and where citizens wanted the garden and others wanted nothing and others wanted another thing. So that's where a mayor has to make the decision. So I decided for a few months, from May to September, to have a playground, a short-lived playing field in front of a building which is an office for architecture. And believe me, kids came from, from all over Paris especially in summer for those kids who don't go on holidays. 104 again. I don't see the picture of the young Gerard in Tokyo. You think it's coming? No. Because there was a little uh, funny thing to show you. Yes, it's up there. How do I press it, like this? So you see up on the left, this is me. In 76, when I came to Japan, so it says Shukan Posto, which is a fashion magazine, and the slogan is Ore wa Ore, which is me is me, which is a strong masculine macho way of saying I am who I am. And the reason why we show this picture is because when I came to Japan in 76, I was young. I was 19 and I was a student. And to pay my studies and to be able to live in this wonderful city and, and, and become a Japanese by heart, I had to work. So I was doing advertising. So I encourage any student you would know would come to Japan to do this. It pays very well. So let's turn this up. Okay. I would like to finish this presentation by saying again a few words about the necessity 
and to have artistic art culture being the priority of our civilization. In a world today where media like to show first violence, ugliness, emotions, and a bit of uh, what everybody has, which is sometimes to look at what's the most impressive and catastrophic. We need to have this smooth, long-term, slow pace, beauty being shared. Would be great to have news on CNN or ABC or whatever channel to start with art instead of starting with catastrophes, at least once a week. And I would like to invite the most progressive artists, engineers, architects, developers, investors to be the first citizen to be always invited in our cities because they will be the future and they will be our great hope. Thank you very much.